the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ended the war between the United States and Mexico. It was signed in Mexico City at the Basilica of Guadalupe at the Villa de Hidalgo. The signing of this treaty took care of two things. One, it gave the United States the land that they wanted because of the manifest destiny that they felt they had. And second, Mexico was obligated to recognize Texas independence and the territories that Texas claim as being part of their territory. This recognition of Texas is something that the Mexican government um, denied or um, did not recognize for over a decade, since 1836, with the Alamo and the capture of Antonio Lopez de Santana in San Jacinto. The signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ends the war. Mexico, with the inclusion of Texas, loses 54% of its natural national territory. Over 16,000 Mexican soldiers die. Mexico is defeated. Mexico is uh, occupied by the U.S. Army for nine months during the negotiation of this treaty. That signed on February 2nd, 1848. President Manuel de la Peña y Peña becomes president at the time of the defeat of Mexico. He is negotiating for it from a place of occupation and defeat. And at this point, Mexico doesn't really have much um, influence on the development of this uh, treaty. The war was provoked by the United States to gain the territories that today we know as the American Southwest. And the United States needed this treaty to make this legal. As a result of this treaty, the United States was to pay Mexico $15 million for uh, the territories other than Texas, about 400 million today and take three million of uh, debt that Mexican people may have against uh, U.S. citizens. Could Mexico had better terms to negotiate? They could, but that would have to be before the fighting started. During the negotiation of this treaty, the United States was uh, driven by President Polk's idea of manifest destiny. Here's a quote that describes this perspective, which means that the United States was meant for great things, to expand from sea to shining sea without taking into consideration who was in charge of these territories. So there are three things that influence the outcome of this history. One is the American expansionism, expansionalism under President Polk, the political and ideological divisions in Mexico. And I would like to add to this slide also the economic differences between the United States and Mexico. The United States was a thriving, a thriving uh, economy that had been growing for some years, while Mexico was still politically and ideologically divided. And in terms of the economy, uh, it wasn't doing that great. The United States was backed by a strong economy, which means that there, its armed forces 
uh, were well equip equipped and also well trained to face or to have a war against any nation. Mexico wasn't at that place. So therefore, it was no match for the United States. Another thing that influences this history is the Texas boundary issue. The history of Texas being a Mexican province and later state that for a very long time, um, Anglos, especially people from the Southern United States, wanted access to and wanted to expand the slavery into, and eventually becomes during the US Civil War a uh, confederate state. So you can see that happening there. During the negotiation of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, the US Congress has to uh, debate, has to discuss the terms, the issues, and how this is going to happen. One of the things that the United States wanted was to also have or include Baja California and Sonora uh, as part of the treaty, there was also a group of people in Congress that was known as the Old Mexico Movement, meaning that the United States wanted to take over all of Mexico. However, American racist attitudes saved Mexico because the opposition to this idea of taking over all of Mexico, pretty much based on racism, uh, stop this from happening. White supremacist ideas of mixing and interacting with an inferior race is what saved Mexico from being taken over by the United States to its totality. Racist or white supremacist people in Congress said they did not want more Indians or mixed race Catholics to be mingling with them. Quote, ours is the government of the white man. There are different aspects of this uh, treaty, but what's important is that there is two different perspectives from uh, both countries. In the eyes of Mexico, Mexico wanted to be as specific as possible to protect its uh, former citizens, its their rights, their property, their culture, and so on and so forth. So they wanted to protect land grants, they wanted to protect language, religion, and they wanted to make sure that these people were respected as human beings. So Mexico, for a long time during this negotiation, tried its best to protect its former citizens, but the U.S. Congress made significant changes to uh, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo and end up adding something called a protocol, which is the Protocol of Querétaro, and this protocol is uh, footnotes to the treaty. Um, the Mexican version of the treaty, again, is very specific, but to the United States, Congress and the people negotiating, uh, the treaty becomes something of interpretation. One thing that is important to note is that as uh, the United States wanted Baja California and Sonora, but they also wanted access to um, Veracruz and Oaxaca to build a transcontinental uh, railroad to transport uh, commerce from the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific, which is something that very recently the Mexican government has invested into. This was the original Panama Canal that was supposed to be in Mexico. It did not happen. The United States government gave up on this idea and eventually built uh, the Panama Canal in Panama, which was a region that was part of Colombia at one point. So the treaty ended with the payment of $15 million to Mexico for New Mexico and California and other territories like Utah, Idaho, Colorado, Nevada, and so on and so forth. And to assume, as I said, $3 million in claims by U.S. citizens against Mexico. 
to relieve Mexico's debt with the U.S., and that's pretty much where the $50 million went to protect Mexico from Indian attacks at the new border because Mexico had suffered um, and New Spain much uh, in the hands of Indian raids constantly. So when this treaty was signed, Mexico wanted to make sure that um, the United States was going to uh, protect uh, its population in the border area. And this is uh, when the United States comes in and um, eventually uh, forces native people into reservations in the southwest of the United States uh, with much resistance from different Indian tribes. So the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo uh, marked the boundary between the U.S. and Mexico, starting with Rio Grande or Rio Bravo to El Paso, and then from El Paso to Gila River and the Colorado River. And then from the Colorado River to the Pacific at the 32nd parallel. And this is where the boundary is. The United States absorbs 100 million former Mexican citizens. And according to the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, these 100,000 people, some with property, others with no property, were given a year to decide whether they wanted to become U.S. citizens. And if they did not decide to become U.S. citizens, they had two choices. They could remain, and they would, by default, become U.S. citizens. Or they had that choice to um, resettle in the new boundary in the Mexican side with money that was um, negotiated between the U.S. and Mexico for this. And some people did end up resettling in new uh, border uh, states between the U.S. and Mexico. Article 9 of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo specifies the civil property and citizenship rights of former Mexican citizens, meaning that every Mexican citizen that is present in these new acquired territories has protection by the U.S. Constitution to exercise uh, their rights as U.S. citizens. All, all of the rights are valid. <clears throat> but one of the things that happens later on is that instead of their land grants being valid, uh, each one of the territories or states creates a land commission that will uh, make decisions based on evidence. And not all people who are Mexican-American landowners are going to be able to protect their land holdings or land grants. The Mexican version of the treaty was very specific in an effort to protect its former citizens. The U.S. version of the treaty was more general and ambiguous, and that's going to create all kinds of issues for Mexican-American uh, people who uh, are going to have to protect their uh, land grants in these new commissions that decide on their land grants. Typically, they will go through these uh, commissions and in a process that took from four to seven years to decide. And um, sometimes they had uh, a positive outcome, but not all the time. In the meantime, while this is happening, there is also uh, people who are living or building or taking over land that is part of these land grants without permission. And this is going to create all kinds of issues for uh, Mexican-American land grantees. Article 10 of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was an article that discussed the protection of Mexican Texas land grants specifically. But this article was deleted by the U.S. Congress because, as you can see here in this quote, President Polk believed 
the public lands within the limits of Texas belong to the state, and this government has no power to dispose of them or change the conditions of grants already made, end quote. In other words, President Polk did not want to mess with Texas, did not want to deal with internal conflict in Texas because of the history of Texas, in which since the 1830s through the 1860s, 18, 1830s, sorry, um, and later on, uh, the 1840s, during the war and so on and so forth, people continued to come into Texas. Many of these people fought for Texas independence, and some fought for um, uh, Texas, so that uh, against them, against Mexico, and they were rewarded with land. And President Polk did not want to uh, question any of that. Article 11 is an article in which the United States um, allows um, itself to sell weapons and ammunition to native people in its territories, meaning that they are going to arm native people or sell weapons to native people who are their allies in these territories for hunting and other purposes, um, which in theory sound good, but Mexico is going to have to deal with, which means that many of these native people will cross into uh, Mexico or the new Mexico the, the new territory of Mexico at the border, uh, and they will uh, continue to raid, uh, take horses, take people, and this is going to uh, create a lot of chaos for people at the border states like Sonora, Chihuahua, Baja California, and so on and so forth. Mexico wanted to take time to uh, determine this uh, treaty and take time to influence this treaty, but the United States was in a hurry to finish this uh, negotiation because to them this was a done deal and they wanted to move on. They already had plans, they had ideas of what to do with this land, and things like the uh, gold rush um, pushed for many people to migrate into California, uh, and later on people to migrate into Arizona when uh, minerals were found. And the United States was ready to move on. Eventually, in 1853, you have the return of Antonio Lopez de Santana. The United States wants to build an intercontinental railroad, and they realize that the land that they have acquired is not good for this at the border region of New Mexico and Arizona. So they negotiate with the government of Antonio Lopez de Santana, something called the Mesilla, the Treaty of the Mesilla, Mesilla or Tratado de Mesilla, also known as the Gadsden Purchase. In this, the United States uh, pays $10 million to Mexico for 30,000 square miles of land, and this would serve as a location to build a railroad from uh, this area to California. Antonio Lopez de Santana is overthrown over these last move that he makes. This area is uh, what is today Yuma, Tucson, and Sierra Vista, and it's also parts of uh, southern uh, Mexico. And that concludes the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. At this point, you have about 10,000 Mexican-American people who are now in a new country with little protection from their government. And in other words, they have to fend for themselves and find the best way to protect their property, their rights. And with this new arrangement, they will uh, have to interact and survive in this new reality that they're going to face. It is from this point, with the uh, ending of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, that Mexican-American people will experience um, racism, hatred, discrimination, 
by the United States. At the same time, this is going to give, at times, opportunities for financial gains for Mexican American people. And also create tension between these two groups, the Anglo and the Mexican American people. These tensions, this racism, will be something that is going to affect Mexican American people for many generations to come, as you will see in the next lectures.